Hi, stationary friends. Welcome to Ginger PT Stationery. My name is Sarah, and um, today I want to talk with you a little bit about the Pilot Custom 74. Uh, I've been waiting for like 40 minutes for my neighbor's air conditioner to turn off. So here's hoping it doesn't come back on. Um, but um, yeah, today I want to talk about the Pilot Custom 74, and I want to show you my upgrade to my little Inca Pet. So here's my little Inca Pet penguin wearing his Valentine's Cupid costume. I love and adore Inca Pet for holding my ink files, keeping them from falling over. Um, I painted his little self. I mean, he was solid teal blue. And so I tainted, painted his eyes and nose, uh, beak <laughs> and belly and feet. And he's so precious. My little Cupid penguin. I hope that Calvin and Inca Pet doesn't mind that I painted um, his little character. Here's how... Um, how the penguin's eyes kind of looked, you know, before. And I just like them with eyeballs <laughs> a little better. So, um, I love these things. Um, highly recommend. Not sponsored. I've never met them, you know. I've bought all this stuff. I just wanted to, uh, to share that. So, in the last month, I have acquired two Pilot Custom 74 pens. Um, and I... Uh, spoiler alert, am loving them. So um, I just thought I would talk about them a little bit. Um, my thoughts, it's not a an in-depth review, you know, sort of like fig boot on pens does. I don't have weights and measurements and that kind of thing, but I will do a little comparison. I've got some like, um, sta you know, common pens to kind of line one up against. And, um, so anyway, I had been thinking about hunting down a Violet Custom 74 for a little while. They, a couple of years ago, stopped making the Violet color and the orange, which I also wish I had an orange because I like orange and the orange one looks really cool. My dad has always loved orange, so I've always kind of associated orange with my dad and, um, I would like to have that one too, but... Um, I came across this one on a website called Pens in, Pens in Asia. Um, the, the guy there, his name is Tay. He is fantastic. And he offered this to me for a really great price. It was at like $148, which currently, um, I just looked this up at like Goulet Pens and most places, new custom 74s are on sale for $168 or $176. Um, you can find some cheaper at some other places, but that's kind of the standard going price right now. So, 148 was great, and this is a brand new pen, um, and I love it. Um, so, it has um, this, like, smoke black. Um, it is translucent. I know that's hard to see. Um, cap. Let's see if I can put something behind it. Maybe you can see that. It is translucent um, at the top. It has like a, um, a little, what's that called in there that will help seal it up. Um, I got this with a medium nib. Um, it is beautiful. I love the shape of these nibs. And um, it's a number five nib, which is similar to like a regular, I don't know, what do you call it? Like a Western number five nib, non-pilot number five nib, like a Jovo number five nib very similar in size. Um, they're shaped kind of differently, but very similar in size. I know the Custom 823 has a larger nib that's called a size 15, but, um, and some of their other, you know, ones have different sizes too, but the size 15 is apparently similar to like a Jovo size six, number six nib. So I don't know how, how they do their sizing, but, um, but anyway, number five, um, the nib is wonderful, and I'll show you a little bit of a writing sample in a few minutes. Um, this one came with the new Con70 converter, the newer one, that is a little bit easier to use. Um, you put this down in your ink bottle, you press the plunger here, and you have to hold the pen straight up and down to do it well. It took me a couple of tries to figure that out and, and fill it, and it holds a lot of ink. Um, so anyway, I really am liking this converter. Plus this converter adds a good little bit of weight to a pen. I do not like a heavy pen, but, um, but it's almost too light without the converter in it. So that is the Violet Custom 74. 
Then I kept seeing the Benny Fuji, which is a store exclusive, I think, in Japan. Um, and I had to get one of these on eBay. <laughs> you know, you do the sort by lowest price plus shipping and find the cheapest one that seems like it's from a reputable salesperson. And the store I bought it from was great. They sent it right out. Um, but this colorway is just phenomenal. This gold is beautiful. The nib is a little more like champagne-y gold than the hardware on the pen, which is more yellow. But it's not a big enough difference you know it doesn't bother me or anything it's just something to note um this one I have a just the black cartridge that came with it in the pen and honestly I have loved it I have loved having that black ink in this wonderfully smooth also medium nib um I can tell you why in a minute why I got them both in medium um upon first getting this one I found that um, this one felt a little bit cheaper to me in a way, like the plastic just doesn't feel quite as sturdy as this one. I mean, they're obviously different materials because this one's transparent and, but this one feels a little bit more like cheap plastic and it's not, I think it is nicer than what you're going to go buy at Walmart, you know, but it feels a little bit cheaper in ma the material of the pen body than this one does um just slightly it is the more I have used it the less I feel like it feels cheap it does not feel like a cheap pen especially the nib does not feel cheap but the material just does not feel quite as nice if that makes sense um the even just the sound of like you know taking off the cap I don't know if you can hear that but um they're very different so but I have been really loving these. So a quick comparison. Let me put this in my little tray here. And I'll show you how these kind of stack up. Um, you can see it fits right in here kind of between. Uh, it, it's a very similar size to a Platinum 3776. Let me switch these. Very similar size length. Um, and to a Monte Grappa Elmo. Um, it's just slightly taller than both of those. About the same length as a vanishing point, which is hard to compare to because it's such a different shape. Um, and then it is a little bit smaller, shorter, closed than the SD. Um, of course, it's a lot bigger than, than these little, like, what I consider pocket pins. Um, a little bit of a uncapped comparison. I, ooh, I don't want to get ink anywhere. Let's see. I, um... Do not really, I can use this pen uncapped, but I tend to post it. Um, so here is the, I'm trying not to get ink on my lining here. So you can see the Platinum is a shorter pen, um, a little bit unposted, and it's actually about a little bit, only a little bit shorter than the SD. And let's see, this one's kind of the, these middle ones are kind of the most comparable, I feel like. Here's that Elmo. Um, so anyway, I hope that kind of gives you an idea um, when you when I post it, which is how I tend to use it. It is a good bit smaller than the SD. So if you have an SD and you feel like the SD posted is way too long, you can see that this one is shorter. It is slimmer than the SD. Um, but overall, actually kind of a similar shape. I hadn't really considered that. Um, let's see which of these have ink in them. So I'm going to keep this one out because it is kind of, and this one, um, are the most, what am I doing? Comparable um, pens. Let me see. So there is that. Um, let me move this out of my way. So up until I bought these, um, the only gold pilot nib that I owned was the vanishing point nib. Let me see how well I'm keeping things in frame here. Yeah, we're doing okay. Got my little watch uh, monitor. <laughs> um, um, was the vanishing point. And my first vanishing point nib um, when I bought this pen had a broad nib. Um, they are 18 karat gold, so they're a little bit different from, are they 18? Pretty sure. 
anyway, but um, this was a broad, this one had a broad nib in it. And I couldn't figure out why I just didn't love to use it because I love the pen itself. Um, it's pretty comfortable for me to hold. I don't usually hold it, um, you know, around the clip. I usually put a finger on the clip a lot of the time, but still it's just not too uncomfortable for me, but I just wasn't reaching for it. And I finally figured out that it was the nib, that the broad nib was a little bit mushy feeling. And I like broad nibs. I do. I like wet pens. I like, you know, gushers a lot of the time. But the broad nib was a little mushy, and if you've used some gold nibs, you probably know what I mean. Um, and so last year, I bought a medium nib unit to go in this pen, and it has made all the difference. I reach for this all the time now. I keep it loaded up with Iroshizuku Yamabuto, and um, this became a really wonderful writer. And we can compare this um, to the Custom 74s. So, um, yeah, that was my only gold nibbed pilot pen. So, the reason that I got both of these in medium is that I didn't feel like I wanted another broad nib right now. I've been on kind of a fine nib kick in a lot of my pens. Um, and so, I knew I didn't really want a broad nib right now, though maybe one day in the future. Um, and I had heard that the step down from the medium pilot nibs to the fine is a big jump and that the fines are very fine. And so I wasn't sure about that because as much as I've been enjoying like my Western fine nibs, I don't know that I would want a pilot fine nib right now. So I ended up getting them both in medium. Um, yeah. So anyway, um, let me show you how they write. Um, this one, again, has uh, that black ink cartridge in it. So this one is the Pilot Custom 74 Benny Fuji. And it has a medium nib. And this is the Pilot Black cartridge. I'm writing at a weird angle here, so my handwriting is not wonderful. This black ink dries really quickly, even on Tomoe River paper. Um, I have enjoyed, usually I never use black inks, but I have really enjoyed having black in this pen. It's sort of like I don't really know what other color to put in it, and the black just works really well. And so I might keep it up with, keep it inked up with some black pilot cartridges which I have quite a few of because they come with you know the Kakuno and some of those other pens and usually I toss them to the side and put in a converter to put in another ink so I have a few black cartridges and of course I could always buy some more but I um or I could buy a bottle of pilot black ink um having the cartridge in this pen makes a difference it adds a little bit of weight just a smidge obviously it's not much but it makes this pen feel a little bit um, more luxurious, if that makes sense. Um, without the cartridge in it, when I first took it out of the box, like I said, I just was kind of like, is this a fake pen? Because it just felt kind of like too light and sort of cheap. But the more I've used it and the more I've gotten to know it, the less I feel that way. And um, it is really beautiful. I do think that the grip is a slightly different color from the finial. Do you see that? Not a big deal, but I'm just now noticing that. Um, so that is the Benny Fuji. Um, it is beautiful. It is a little bit more expensive than the regular Custom 74. But if it is your cup of tea, you know, I do recommend it. And um, so here is the other one <laughs> in violet. Um, there are some really other, pretty other colors. There's one that's called Merlot that's like a purpley red. Um, probably similar to the Star Ruby, Pelican Star Ruby color, which is one of my favorites. Um, but I don't know. Of course, like just as soon as they quit making these, I was like, but I needed a violet one. <laughs> and so this is what happens to me. But this is inked with, oh, I had it pulled out. Um, oh, okay, here it is. With Sailor Shikiori Fuji Sugata. 
Sugata. Fuji Sugata. Um, this ink is really beautiful. It is very, um, sh it's a very much a shading ink. Um, you might know that I'm not very into like a lot of sheen or even shimmer. I like shimmer if it works really well, but I'm very picky about them. Generally, I just love a good shading ink. And this one is that. Um, and I'll, I want to compare a little bit for you. There is the Fuji Sugata. Here is the Hiroshizuku Iros Murasaki Shikibu, which many, many people are familiar with. You can see that it's just slightly redder than, than this one. Actually, it looks like in the camera this is coming up a little bit bluer than it should be. But um, here is the Pannonia Cult Pens by Pannonia. Arvaxka, which I have not put in a pen yet, but I have a swatch. You can see how blue that is in Roar and Cleaner Cassia, which is one of my favorite purples. It does have a little more sheen in this big swatch, but in normal writing, it really doesn't have any sheen. So you can see this is kind of lighter. Um, it's a little bit more uh, watered down. <laughs> it's not a good word, but it's, it is lighter. It doesn't come across really dark and opaque. Excuse me. So Pilot. Custom 74, why am I dotting that? I was thinking about dotting this. 74 Violet, medium nib. I have a little lotion on my hands and so um, I think that's affecting that four right there. Um, oh yeah, and that, okay, there's lotion there. That's why that's, that looks like that. This ink is beautiful. I love it. I do feel like um, these nibs are just slightly wider than the Vanishing Point Medium. Um, let's see. Oh, you can see that shading in there. I'll hold it up to the camera in just a minute. This one definitely is a little wider. Like I would, you know, this one leans broad and it probably has to do with the ink as well. But this one is a drier ink probably than, than that black is. And so um, it makes a difference. Here is the vanishing point. So I think the vanishing point is probably the finest of the three. Um, and then the violet and then the, the Benny Fuji. But like I said, the ink probably makes a difference as well. But can you see any of that shading in those um, little lines? I feel like that's what I usually see in that my writing sample, which is not very good right here, <laughs> uh doesn't do it do, doesn't do it much justice i can't talk and write at the same time and i can't write a whole m um what's my little pangram fuzzy ducklings by expensive nope exquisite handwoven jumpers like I said this ink is a little dry and so um it doesn't come out super dark you know it I have really enjoyed it though it is a really good ink anyway these pens have been a joy to use very much so um I do see more pilot gold nibs in my future um i would really like a custom 823 in amber i think the vac filler is not something that i need because generally i just put a smidge of ink in pens but i have emptied this cartridge i mean this converter already once and refilled it so i am using these pens a lot um which really says something because because I ink pens and they stay inked for sometimes six, eight, ten months, you know, um, without using up all the ink because I just ink so many pens and, you know, I just am like that. <laughs> I get to where I'm like, I miss that pen. I miss having that pen inked. And, um, and so I just go ink another pen. So, um, anyway, something else I wanted to say is, sorry, the, the feeling of using these nibs is... I wouldn't say it's like glassy, you know, like you use some of those broad nibs that are really like 
you can't even feel them on the paper. These are not glassy, buttery smooth, but um, the Platinum 3776 nibs um, have feedback. You know, they feel almost like you're writing with a pencil, and this one just ran out of ink, um, so it's actually in my pile to wash. But um, these kind of feel like you're writing with a pencil, so they're not scratchy, but they have what we call feedback. I mean, I'm sure most of you know what feedback is, but for those who don't, what we call feedback is where you can feel it on the page, like when you're writing with a pencil. Um, but it's not scratchy, like you don't feel like it's pulling up fibers of the paper. These do not feel feedbacky like that, but you, they're also not, I would, I would call them, yes, they're buttery smooth but not to an extreme. So <laughs> I hope that makes sense. So um, anyway, that's just a little chat about the Pilot Custom 74. I had not seen anybody post anything about Benny Fuji on YouTube yet. And so I thought I would jump out there and share the Benny Fuji because if you are really wanting it, you don't want to miss out on it because it probably will not be easy to find, you know, before too very long. I think eBay is probably your best bet. Um, none of the like American retailers have these, you know, I think it's a, J a Japan exclusive. So if you want it, go find your one. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Um, and I will talk to you next week. Bye.